Now to the amazing recent discovery of historic film footage that brings to life a story of desperation and heroism. It's a story that a now retired Hudson Falls history teacher has been telling for 22 years. And now this film brings it all into focus. The Nazis figured if you had one fourth Jewish blood, then you were considered Jewish. So, you know, therefore you were to be destroyed, to be gotten rid of. That's the misguided premise that defined Elizabeth Seaman's childhood. Her grandparents arrested in the middle of the night and sent to the gas chamber. Her parents arrested by the Nazis while traveling. They were arrested, and then the next day I was sent for. She was just six when she and her parents were imprisoned in a German concentration camp. People just dying and falling down and rats on them, and then others pouncing on them to see what they might have in the way of food because you know, everybody was in starvation mode. Her father died there. In April 1945, as the war was nearing an end, Elizabeth, her mom, and 2,500 others were loaded like cattle onto a train bound for another camp in Czechoslovakia. The tracks were blown up and the train stopped. A lot of the survivors say, well, the train commander was given the orders to drive the train over a bridge over the Elbe River and just blow it. Kill everybody. They also recount that German SS soldiers, a killer squad, ordered the men and boys to get off the train. So there's a good possibility that these people would have been killed in some way. Yes. Sure. But as luck would have it, some American soldiers were in the area and happened upon the stopped train. One of those soldiers, Red Walsh, a man born and raised in Johnstown, happened to recount the story of the train nearly 60 years later to Matt Roselle, a Hudson Falls High School history teacher who was recording the interviews with World War II soldiers and assigning his students to do the same. Did you yeah. mention the train at all? What? The train just before... No, I didn't tell him about the train. It was that conversation wow. about the dramatic liberation of 2,500 wow. Jewish prisoners from a train near Magdeburg that changed everything for Roselle. He tracked down the only existing images of that day, posted them on the school's website, and as word spread among survivors, for the last 15 years, reunited them, including Elizabeth Seaman, with their American liberators. And now, after all these years, this. A silent film of what took place that day. It was buried deep within the National Archives. To see the moving footage after 22 years, right? It's just amazing. Roselle, who's written several books telling the stories of American GIs, never knew it existed. These people are in distress. They're, they're swarming this soldier. They're trying to get the food. Yes, this is what happened, okay? So this footage has been an explosive. The coming to light after 22 years, after 78 years buried in the National Archives, it's really, really important stuff. Really, really important to Elizabeth Seaman, who was just six years old the day the Americans liberated them. What was your reaction when you first saw this video a few days ago? Oh, just total amazement. And then I went and looked and said, yep, that's my mom. Incredible. <laughs> this is her mom reaching out for food from the American soldier, even though she was very ill from starvation and possibly typhus. Uh, were you grateful to see the video of your mom? Oh, yes. Yes, of course I was. I was so excited about that. The newly discovered film is silent but Matt Roselle is bringing it to life. It'll be central to the four-part miniseries he's working on with an Ohio director. It's called A Train Near Magdeburg. I can give it context. I can bring it to life. I can explain to people why this is so significant. What happened was so significant to Elizabeth Seaman that she knew then that she wanted to live in America. After that, um, America was just... <laughs> the great thing, you know, and I, I wanted to be an American. I wanted to go to America, and I finally came to this country. I was very happy. For Matt Roselle, the newly found film is another tool to educate. He says after all these years, he still gets attacked by people who claim the Holocaust never happened. Coming up at 5, what he has to say to them. It was 78 years ago that American soldiers, including one from Johnstown, freed 2,500 Jewish prisoners from their German captors. And tonight, for the first time on local television, we're seeing film footage of that momentous day. Mark Maholland is here with the story you're seeing first on 13. Mark. 
Rachel, this is that film. It's silent, but it speaks volumes about what happened that day in April of 1945. Tracks had been blown up, and some of the 2,500 Jewish people being held captive on the train were starving and sick with typhus. With the war nearing the end, the Nazis were considering blowing up the train or killing all of the people on board. But they got word that the Americans were nearby, and the German soldiers took off. About an hour later, a couple of Americans in a tank show up. One of them was a guy from Johnstown named Carol Red. Walsh. They're credited with liberating the Jewish prisoners, and as this recently uncovered silent film shows, not a moment too soon. Some of them were worse off than others, but all were starving. The film shows them pushing up against the soldiers, begging for what little food they had. This is a story that author and retired Hudson Falls history teacher Matt Roselle has been telling for 22 years, ever since he interviewed Red Walsh for an oral history project. Now he has the moving pictures to go along with the moving story. What you have here is another nail in the coffin of this thing called Holocaust denier. I have been attacked by Holocaust deniers. I will be attacked <laughs> as more and more people hear about this story. The only way to combat Holocaust denial, Holocaust minimization, anti-Semitism uh, is through education.